Welcome everyone, welcome to oh, Review Yourself. Oh, we're back with another pick me. Uh, that was another sound, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> Sarah from Weird Horizons back. And don't you worry, we're here with another positive pick me up, cheery, cheery film. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's yeah. got to be done every now and again. Yeah. So last time uh, Sarah was here, we reviewed Life, the 2017 film about Cal- Calvin, the homicidal flubber. And now, just to make it even more uplifting, we're going to do old the 2021 M Night Shyamalan film. What mm-hmm. about that doesn't make you want to watch it? Uh, about a, a, a beach on a on a tropical paradise where time seems to run rather quicker than it usually does. So like 50 years in one day, and about a group of people that get stuck there, and how are they going to get out of it? Are any of them going to survive? And it's yeah, it's that's about it. Welcome, Sarah. Anyway. Hello, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna be. Yeah, why is it all of these dark themes we keep? You know, last time it was just life, the idea of like life in general being wiped out, and now it's like let's grapple with the idea of aging and the inescapable death. nature of that death. Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> well, at least in your voice, it sounds nice. Like... <laughs> We're all going to die. <laughs> Strap in, you will not survive. <laughs> so, I mean, did you know that Jack Nicholson did a film with Marlon Brando? And if you'd like to stick <laughs> around, if you'd like to stick around to know what that film is, I'll say it towards the end because I've got the trivia for it and why that's in the film. And I've, I've just watched it back a second time and it held up incredibly well because I was kind of worried that mm. I'd watch it back and be like, oh, the only thing that sustained me through the first watch was, you know, just the mystery and everything. But actually, I was quite impressed. I think the performances are really good across the board, uh, even the kids. Yeah, they um, are not bad, I have to say. Like, I was expecting... I The very few things I heard about this was that the kids' performances were quite bad. And I don't, I don't think they were. I think they're stylized in a weird way, but I don't think the performances were bad in and of themselves, you know? Yeah, I, th- I think the, the only thing with the kids was that... that the idea about whether they were not just physically growing up, but also mentally growing up, mm-hmm. that was a little bit muddled because there was times where they were talking as if they were growing up in the mind. Like that bit where she's saying, I, I used to see in so few colours and now I see in lots of colours, which is yes. just classic M. Night scripting. But I kind of like his quirky way of doing things. It, if At the very least, he's always interesting. But then there was the bit with the kid, like later on oh, whatever his name is we'll get to it and like the baby dies and yes that this is how cheery this episode's going to be and the you know like then she dies it's this girlfriend type thing whatever i don't know and then he's talking like a kid and it's like i don't quite understand what and they're still kids mentally but i don't it, yeah. it, it all got a little bit i made a yeah. note of that as well because like i said they it felt like so obviously they start off as very young and then they make the decision to have different actors play them at some point. And early on, like I said, it seems like because they're physically aging, they're mentally aging as well. So like I said, they make that comment of like just the kind of thoughts they're having changing. And I thought they were going to kind of go through this mental maturity, just very accelerated along with like the physical maturity. But then they like I said then they didn't it's almost like the girl who I can't remember whose name Maddox mm-hmm. it's kind of like she does but the brother doesn't and I'm not I don't know if there was an explanation or if it was just inconsistent or yeah I'm, I'm not sure I mean to be I will say this for the film though it definitely like there's lots of clues when you watch it mm. back a second time so like the mum saying about uh, you, you you know, don't wish away this moment. Look out the windows. How lovely is it? Type thing, which is definitely something my dad used to say. It was if you were, Dad, can we watch a film? No, it's sunny. Get yourself out there. Look at it. Don't waste this. But uh, and but then there's other bits where they're like the the dad comments right at the beginning when they first get to that hotel because it seems to be like this paradise. And he says, "Oh, like Warren and Warren must be affiliated with this resort. Like we love this pharmaceutical company at work." And you kind of it, it drops these little hints in there, which to be fair, the first time around don't really stick out to you. But then watching it back, you're like, oh, okay, this is clever. Like the bit with the cop. Like when I first watched yeah. it, I was like, why are you introducing this guy that like we've never seen? Like, 
because it did the, it did yeah come together quite well at the end didn't it like it yeah. really did sort of you think oh the ending is just kind of kind of peter out but like i actually thought the ending really kind of made me look back on the film much more favorably because it did seem like okay there's a lot of very like intentional things that are put in from the very beginning and they all actually come to fruition and like I feel like a lot of films don't do that like they don't or they'll put things in but they're not all realized that this one did and I was like yeah a film that's ending that actually felt like it was planned from the beginning well that's pretty yeah same with me like but that's pretty cool because one of the like criticisms of the film was its ending because it's based on the French language Swiss graphic novel Sandcastle by Frederick Peters and Pierre Oscar Le- Levi. Um, and in the actual uh, like graphic novel, that finishes and it doesn't tell you why. It, I don't know if everyone dies, but it does not tell you why. Like It doesn't tell you what's happening. It leaves it open type thing, which I think, again, that's the whole argument about books versus films, which I, mm-hmm. I feel like I've had a million times already on this podcast, so I'm not going to go through it again. But, but yeah, I, I also like, like the... Uh, like the ending, the actors overall were pretty decent. Although I've got to say, and although I do like the actor who is who plays, we'll go through the family. So you have Prista, who's uh, the mum, who's played by Vicky Kreps, who's who's pretty cool, and Guy, the dad, played by Giel Garcia Bernal. He he was really good. He plays like a she's a curator in a museum, which gives her like all these little hints about like she's worried about. Like she's like 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 a like not a doctor, but she like looks at fossils and that kind of like kind of like a paleontologist, I think. But it was pretty cool that like she knows that, and then she's got skills to diagnose like how long the bones have been there. And the dad's like an actuator or something. I think he's called like a a guy who calculates your risk and uh, insurance, which yeah. is like the most American it's thing so you've handy. ever seen. Well, yeah. The kids are around and he's like, did you know there's like 75% of all accidents in the home every year are related to coffee tables? And it's like, all right, fair enough. Like, this is really strange fun, Dad. American accent because it's like, I haven't seen like, I think the last thing I saw Gail Garcia Bernal was like Motorcycle Diaries or what's that film about Pinochet? I haven't seen him for ages and him doing a weird American accent really threw me off initially, I have to admit. It's um. The decision that they made. Yeah, and the mum like sounds slightly French. Yeah. As well, I, I don't know if she's French. Uh, I probably should have checked, but oh no, she well she is. Yeah. Oh no, she's not. <laughs> she's a uh, Luxembourg. She's in Luxembourg, so. It yeah. definitely sounds like they were both speaking English as a second language, and again, was that like an an intentional thing? It kind of. I don't know, because like I said, the, the method of speaking for all of them, they all spoke in such a really strange way. But I, I don't know if that was <laughs> intentional. Like oh, yeah. Exactly. I mean, and then you get the kids. So Trent is the, I think he's meant to be six at the beginning, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's a little boy. Now, I don't know if he's got some kind of autism because they felt like they were setting him up too. Like she said, oh, he remembers facts and figures and. And he, he, you definitely had that come across in certain points, but they never kind of, they never confirm it. No, they just kind of leave it wide open. Because I was thinking, like every all the other families, medical conditions like whether it's you know epilepsy, or schizophrenia, which becomes dementia later on, or calcium deficiency, uh, the guy with like a clotting disease stuff a uh, middle middle sized sedan which i just love mid sized sedan, sedan which is oh just a great God. name and <laughs> it's one of me, yeah so i wasn't sure if like they, they were trying to say that like they they wanted him there because it was like a an ex, not an experimentation that's the wrong word but maybe, Did maybe they show at the end then you know at the, the very end where they got the big board and it's got all of the participants in in the study um do they mention anything about him i'm not sure i don't think so but I mean, I might have, I might have. Because they only that show part. it briefly, don't they? Like you just briefly see um, everyone there, and like so, they've all got like pre-existing medical conditions. But I don't know. Yeah, might be worth look, might be worth looking at. Um, he makes friends with the kid of the main, like ground, like I was going to say, the, like like Jack Torrance from The Shining, but kind of is the main kind of caretaker of the hotel. 
Then he's Idlib. Uh, Maddox is the sister. Um, and that, that rounds off that family of four. And they've stumbled across this family. And then, but you know straight from the off that like there's something going on between them, like the mum and dad. You're thinking, are they getting divorced? Is she cheating on him? Is he cheating on her? Like something's going on. But, which I quite liked the first time I watched it. But then it's like, oh no, she's got a tumour and I think she started to look upon her own mortality and mm. about what she wants in life. And that comes back later on with that conversation where they're talking about the guy's like, oh, I, I don't know if I would have accepted anyone, but that guy, that guy's a joke. Like that guy, that guy, he drops most of his American accent at that point. And he's just like, yeah. it's like, it's like that guy, that guy's a joke. So I quite, I quite like that. I just I said it is quite I do like how it just jumps right in like it is one of those films where like it's it's not overly long it's like just over an hour and a half but it does feel like everything you see is there for a reason and it does all kind of come back at the end mostly it all sort of slowly unfolds like so because you see immediately yeah there's this weird vibe between the parents and like they keep like said laboring this point about you got to enjoy this so it's like there's like a ticking clock for some reason and you don't know why and then you slowly sort of find that out it's they do kind of just tell you a lot of this stuff but I'm glad that there was that much detail there like it did feel like there was a lot of different struggles going on between these characters which I I don't know I appreciated it appreciated that it could have been a lot more you know shallow couldn't it they could just plunked them on a beach and then they're like there you are do you know what? I was thinking almost exactly the same thing. Like, I was watching the film, and I know they've got to have medical conditions and stuff for, you know, and the calcium deficiency one where she starts to break her arms and legs and it's, yeah. but it heals before. It, and that got almost a little bit kind of monsterish. But at the same time, I was thinking, you know what? M. Night Shyamalan never takes the easy way out. Like, mm-hmm. he very easily could have had this as just kind of like, there's a lot of people on a beach. They're all going to start dying. Some of them are old. Some of them are young. How are they going to deal with it? And it could have gone that way, but it really delves into like kind of what's going on and uses it to look at, you know, failing mental capacity and to look yeah. at like, you know, failing relationships and, and actually has some quite nice cathartic moments, especially to what it's like at the end where the mum and dad, like he's got like age related macular degeneration. So he's losing his eyesight obviously mm-hmm. can't get like cataracts taken off or anything on this island or this beach. The mum has got like age related hearing loss. So she's now losing the ability to, to hear. And it's like, you know, the, the relationships like they've, it's got okay and they've, they're stronger, but actually it's, it's, it's like breaking down in other ways. And then like, she doesn't last very much longer after he dies. And it's, 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 it's uplifting guys, put it that way. So, so, yeah. but no, yeah, I like, I like that yeah. depth as well. They are the focus on the relationships because, like I said, they could have just lent entirely into, like, the horror of the medical side of it and all of these medical conditions getting rapidly worse and even just the age side of it. They could have just hinged it all on the idea of your body just, like, changing rapidly and you can't do anything about it. But, like, yeah, they all had really interesting relationship dynamics as well. Um, I said most of them. There's... The couple with the the lady with um with epilepsy, they they their couple they just seem to be pretty rock solid. They're really happy, but like um Charles, well, a and nurse and a psychologist. Crystal? Yeah, I did like, like the... sorry Charles yeah. and Crystal. I really liked. So you got like you know this <laughs> very British doctor and. Crystal, who just seems to be is like you know trophy wife, clearly much like younger than him. But I don't know. I feel like they actually made a lot more effort to make their relationship make sense, and she yeah. wasn't just like a purely kind of materialistic person, like you think. I kind of liked her character. Like a, yeah. I like how they subverted expectations, and she turned out to be. You know. She had a brain. She had a brain, didn't she? Like I don't mean yeah. that in an insulting way, but she, the, the way she's written, like yeah, she shouts for him a few times because he's a doctor, but she, you can see that she's like very supportive of him. Like she, because that's one of my, in fact, probably my favorite part of this film. You get talking of cast. We get a uh, Doctor Charles, who's played by uh, Rufus Sewell, who he, uh, I mean, famously from The Holiday. If anyone hasn't seen that, he, um. 
but, but he's been in all sorts anyway. But he he just he plays it really well, and she's like there, being very supportive of him. That her his mum's there as well, and they just keep saying towards you know he's, oh he's having a stressful time at work, and you find he's a chief medical officer and and like a thoracic surgeon or cardiac surgeon, or cardiac thoracic surgeon or whatever he is. So he's clearly very very kind of intelligent and very accomplished in his field. But there's something not quite right because he starts coming out with these random little little things like a. Uh, like what are you what are you looking at before? Do you want to punch in the face? And you're like, whoa, what is it? You're like, what's going on here? Like, there's all these, and that's the whole thing around the. Did you know Jack Nicholson was in a film with Marlon Brando? And this is a bit where, I mean, I'm not laughing at it because you'll get to what what this means later on. But it's just a situation like you're laughing at the situation rather than because you can't figure out what's going on. Like, there's the bit where who somebody else dies, and there's a lot of deaths in this, so it's hard to pinpoint. And you hear Rufus just go. Oh, d- did, did you know that Jack Nicholson was in a film with Marlon Brando? And then they're all like, oh my God, they're all like crying. And he's like, hang on a minute, hang on. Let, let, let's just, let's just sort, <laughs> let's just sort this out. Let's get to the, let's get to what we need to know. Does anybody know films? <laughs> I, was, I was laughing because it's just out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a funny one. Uh, what, funny. What, did, what did you think about that? Because I, I love that, hot, that build up of trying to figure out what was going on. I do. I really liked it. Like, I think, like, that some of these characters could have been really simple, and you kind of engineer this situation, which, like, yeah, by sheer coincidence, you've basically got so, like multiple medical people here who know exactly what's going on. You've got multiple experts in their field, and they they very quick quickly re- realizes what's happening, and it seems quite. Um, What's the word? Oh, what's the word? It's it's like a happy coincidence, you know. It's just like, ooh, all of these experts are here. But I do. I think all the characters Coinc- were no, not coincidence. You just said that. Um, yeah, yeah, basically. But I think oh, all of them f- turned is out it fate. Be, yeah, it it feels very fated. Oh, no, 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 I've got it. No, I've got it. Is mm. convoluted. Is that what you think, though? They're like yes. not convoluted. Yeah. But then it does make sense because, like, they have been cherry picked for this situation, and you know they're trying to study this. So having people there who physically understand the situation just gives the people who are studying the phenomenon just more to work with. So it kind of makes sense. And like, I think bringing in all of these different aspects towards like aging and not just physical aging, but like the idea of your brain breaking down and you know mental illnesses becoming worse over time and stuff it's just they managed to pack so many interesting things going on at the same time in and like basically every character was was there for a good reason and you know there are a lot of them are very unlikable but at least it felt like they were all adding something to the story even like charles who i was just like as soon as he started talking i was like oh this guy's an arsehole but <laughs> well rufus sewell plays an arsehole very well he's uh, we, so we, good we, at we, it yeah yeah and but that, and that's the thing the fact that nobody feels like cannon fodder like at all like so when even kind of like mid-sized sedan which is who's a <laughs> rapper and then even then in classic in classic m night Shyamalan style you have him talking to i think that I think the doctor's daughter, who starts off being six and then rapidly gets older, obviously, with a time difference. And mm. she has that talk, and the guy's, he's like, he you just have that walk, and he's like, My name's Brandon. My dad's a dentist. My mom's a, a lawyer. And he's like, I just wanted somebody to know that. And I was like, Oh my God. So this this kid who's like out there is this rapper because the daughter, the, the the other family's daughter recognizes him. Like, oh my God, that's mid sized sedan. <laughs> and they're all like, All the older ones are looking at him like, He's who? type thing. And I just I like that bit, and it, and again, like I hate I don't hate using the phrase, but I think it gets overused in terms of like nowadays in terms of films where people say, "Oh, this film ex- uh, like subverted my expectations," but this one actually does, but in a good way. Hey, that's mm. what I've always liked about M Night Shyamalan f- films, and I know this is from a from a book, but like a source, but he did the the screenplay of it, and it's always got that quirkiness in it. Like this is really outside of his comfort zone, really, because this is the first film that he made completely outside of Philadelphia, from what I understand. So, or Pennsylvania, whatever. whatever. Um, I'm confusing myself now. Is it Philadelphia? Yeah, it's Philadelphia. Uh, so it's the first one that he made outside. So this is like Stephen King venturing outside of, you know, 
the town that I've now forgotten. Not Derry, Maine. the other one. Maine, thank you. Um, yeah, so it was our Castle Rock, which is one he made up. But so it, I, I like that kind of depth because I think one of the things that I – because I never saw this in cinemas because I, I was – one of those ones I was going to go see and just never got around to it. Yeah, and then you, and I take kind of reviews with a pinch of salt. I prefer to go and listen to like YouTubers or certain podcasters that I kind of trust their opinion. And like, all these will tell me if it's any good or not. And I remember a lot of people being very mixed on it, like very like, oh, it's a little bit weird. And I'd heard about like the kids having a baby and I was thinking, well – what what like how does that but then when you put it in context the film it's it's like oh that's the that's odd but it fits the situation of the film mm. and the, i mean this is another thing going back to the art the whether or not the kids got autism because the way he says to his dad like oh sorry dad like because his dad says to him you did you did what you did what you have to do to have a baby and he's like i, he's like, I thought you had to do that again and again for it to work and it's like no it, it can just be once which I think it's a valuable lesson yeah. for everybody. For everybody, but it's like uh, I was just an interesting way of doing it because I thought, how on earth is this? Because I think somebody had told me that who'd seen it told me what happened, and I was like, hang on a minute, what, what, what happens? But when you watch it in context of the film, it's like, right, okay, I, I get it. It's odd, but I, I kind of understand what's going on. But it's yeah, it is it, odd. It is one of those bits, though, like we were saying about it being slightly inconsistent with how the kids like age and how they change because like the adults are pretty are pretty static like their personality doesn't really change just any like medical conditions they're suffering with like just get worse like an accelerated rate but like yeah that was a weird one because it's like okay they are physically much older like they were both like six and now they're like 17 or something in terms of like physically they are but at the same time it's like a couple of hours ago they were literally six like yeah how did it work with how their brains mature I don't quite get that I no, feel like like they got a bit muddled and lost in the middle but yeah maybe maybe the deleted scenes out but, but I suppose because that's what I mean because that scene in the tent because you don't actually say anything by the way just for anybody wondering yeah <laughs> they, they're just kind of there talking about how they're frightened and but then they seem to talk more mature like he seems to talk more mature so does she and it's like and that coupled with how that how his sister Maddox is talking earlier on it's like oh okay so they're not only maturing in their body they're maturing in their brain yeah. So it's like I kind of get this that they're both frightened. Like about three or four people have died at this point. So it's like right, okay, yeah, they've traumatic experience, blah blah. But then it doesn't quite stick the landing. It's like no, and yeah, it's it's a it's a funny one because I think it was done for like I'm not saying it was like done for a shock factor, but that bit where she walks across the beach and she like she's like five months pregnant. It's like whoa, okay. Like you can see, yeah. it feels like it. It should have been a moment where it's like whoa, what the hell's going on? But actually, it, it feels like a misfire for me because it. I don't know about you, but it comes along with so much more going on. Like the dog's dead, the nana's dead, like the girl floats up dead. The one that mid-sized yeah. sedan. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep saying mid-sized sedan to enjoy it's it. So funny. It's great in there, but it's like it's funny because it's true. So he he pops up and then uh like the, the girl he like went out to swim, she pops up and then although although I've oh right, I've got to ask because I noticed it and it annoyed not it annoyed yeah. me because I didn't understand it. Oh no, she did take all the clothes off, didn't she? I thought I was thinking, why didn't she have any clothes on when she like they found oh, her? No, she did take them off. But she yeah, she yeah, she did, yeah. I've just remembered. Oh okay. okay yeah. My um, theory, I have a theory then, because like I said, that feels like it comes it feels like it comes at the moment, like I said, where there's so much shit going on. Like, it doesn't have the punch that, like, that would be the big, like, gut punch thing that you would build to reveal. Like, you'd said it, like, the kids are aging and the parents have got to come to terms with the fact that they thought they were going to have all this time with their kids. They're going to get to spend, you know, their childhood with them. And they realise that by the time they get out of here, even if they do, they're going to be grown ups. And you'd think that would be like the shock reveal of just, okay, not only are we 
physically you know missing out on all of this opportunities to see them age and be there for all of these things but also mentally they're going to come out different people than they were and I think like he must have had this idea of this shot this big reveal of like okay not only is all this time gone but they are like physically mature people now and capable of having their own kids and did that and then worked back with some of the other with other bits and then for whatever reason changed his mind about how that was going to happen mentally because that scene and the surrounding of that scene like you can tell they're having like different feelings they've never grappled with before but the vocabulary and the way they articulate what they're feeling is very childlike you know yeah so that makes it uncomfortable to watch because you're like i don't quite Mm -hmm. it doesn't sit well with you i don't know whether whether he wanted it i don't know because if he was trying to have it to be like some kind of discussion upon like aging and not having much time with the kids did he want it to be some kind of comment upon children well not children having children but like you know teenage pregnancy or did he want it to be like a, a quote on that that people are in such a rush to have a life and have children but if he was which I'm not saying is, but if he was, whatever for whatever reason, that's the only bit in it where I thought you could easily take that out and it wouldn't affect it. Yeah. But it would get rid of like, I would say the 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 bit that was like really rough was like the bit where like the baby dies from lack of attention. So it's like, whoa, okay, like this is pretty rough. Like it 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 absolutely goes for it at that point, and that was. Yeah, it is really yeah. is like, like I said, it's designed that bit is designed to be like this horrendous reveal, and then. It's pretty, it's pretty just aggressively horrible from that from then on. Like it's very rapid fire. Things are going downhill, like like one thing after another is happening. To like the point, multiple horrible things are happening. Like like said, she's just given birth and the baby's like died instantly because it can't, mm. you know, it can't survive in this environment. In the meantime, like the mum with the calcium deficiency is like really suffering and she's like hunched and she's searching around for her family and her husband's like lost it basically and it's this all happening at once and I don't know it felt it's like it you have this bit where everything's horrendous but then it tries to kind of claw something back from it like it doesn't go full tilt into well, it does go full tilt horror for a while, but then you have you have this resolution with the parents where, like I said, they kind of make the best of it. They like reconcile and they have as close as they can just like a natural like aging and growing old together. Um, but that's like <laughs> twenty minutes after the the mum with the calcium deficiency is just like thrashed herself into a little ball of bones in the, in the cave it's so yeah funny. and then the bit where you know you get i mean the rufus uh, sorry the dr charles he he's battling some kind of schizophrenia and i i thought the moments where he was aggressive were terrifying like he played that so well then there's other parts where he's asking about like, jack nichols and Marlon brando and you look in his face and it's like well, i don't know whether he did because I, I didn't read it anywhere i'd like to think he probably did but he looked like somebody who has dementia Alzheimer's. Like you look at his yeah. face and he saw and confu just confusion is the wrong word for it. Like just if anyone's ever known anyone with like Alzheimer's or dementia, uh, I'd be surprised we probably most of us have, but it's that look of like, they can't comprehend what's going on. So mm. like you can see him grasping around for like, Oh, what can I grab? Oh, we'll grasp at this. And this is that bit where he says, hang on a moment. I, I need you to wait. I'll, I'll I'll react in a minute. That's where like his daughter starts to give birth. And he's like, hang on, I'll I'll react in a minute. And you can see he's like he just doesn't know what to do. And then that because I read that apparently it, it uh, like the schizophrenia becomes dementia. And I kind of get that later on because you know he attacks and kills mid-sized sedan. And oh, okay. yeah, yeah, I mean horrific. His, his, to be fair, at least his, his, uh, his music will go through the roof. His, you know, he'll probably go to number <laughs> one, but um, no, it, it's jokes aside, it's, it's pretty rough. I mean, but there's like looking back at the start part of it with the setup, there's parts of it where they're like, oh, this is a true once in a lifetime trip, you know. And I thought, yeah, it is because you don't come back. 
And the, the, even the part at the beginning where it's all like nice and they're getting shown the ice cream bar and the candy bar and all this. And then they're having a nice dinner and talking. And then all of a sudden there's just this bang. And there's the there's the psychologist uh, and like having a having a seizure. And it's like, OK, so this it's almost. And it, it it's I don't think it was done and it doesn't cheapen the condition, but I think it was put there. To, yeah, sure. She's got the condition, but also it's like it felt like it was like, yeah, you know what you think this film's going to be? Yeah, it isn't, which is so M. Night yeah. Shyamalan. It's like, yeah, OK, I'm, I'm with this. It was quite, yeah, quite immediate. Like it just, it got straight to it, didn't it? And like I said, once oh, yeah. stuff starts happening, it very, it very much just rapid fire. And like, basically everyone dies. And you know, once they start dropping it, it's just like, <laughs> well, oh yeah, it just snowballs, doesn't it? It's like one of those. It's like one of those things where you're just like, well, this got out of hand, <laughs> got out of hand quick. Um, because like they even have that thing like you've got the psychologist trying to rationalize it which i love she's like right we're all suffering from part like we're all suffering delusions it's a group hysteria and she's trying to think it through and in the end it's like no it's like it's like that bit where um the doctor like slashes mid-sized sedan's face mm. and he's like what and he's like, i'm so sorry i thought he was going to attack me i don't know why i did that and it's like you believe him and you're like what's going on and like he picks his hand away from his face and he's, he's like he's scarred already and we haven't even mentioned the tumor bit yet. And like, I was just, uh, I just had yeah. a look at my notes, and I was just like, yeah. You think like, yeah, like Charles is acting erratically, and then you do kind of believe this theory. Like, okay, maybe it is like a psychotic thing. Like maybe there's something in the area that is making people behave erratically or affecting their memory or or whatever. Like you believe that, and then the fucking yeah, the tumor bit. Like when it starts with um, yeah mid-sized sedan love him getting like cutting and healing and then you've got this you think okay initially it's like oh that's cool it means they're kind of invulnerable and then it's like oh no <laughs> this is horrible yeah yeah and like having to hold the wound open and get it out and it was like oh this is pretty it's pretty graphic but i enjoyed it i quite i like the idea of it that obviously she's gonna heal that quickly that they can't just cut it out yeah um, i like the I'll... twist of it i thought it was an interesting way to be like you put this idea of false sense of security in and immediately be like, absolutely not. This is even worse than you can imagine. And then just like, yeah, fingers in there trying to keep the wound open. Horrible, yeah. horrible. Yeah, yeah, it was, I quite liked it. I mean, then you get the kids, you get the kids with like, having to eat a lot of food because their bodies, like, they're growing the mass. And yeah, there's, there's lots of expedition in here, but it never feels like they're doing it for the sake of it. Or at least, I mean, some people would argue that it does, but I think like the kids have to eat a lot of food, and I thought that was kind of really interesting. Um, I meant to say earlier, the guy who plays Alex, age fifteen, apparently that's um, is played by a guy 15. called. Yeah, he doesn't look it though. No, like that, he should have been older. He's played by Alex Wolf, who was in Patriots Day, and he's been in all sorts. He's in um, Three. Yes, I still haven't seen that. You know, then he got that's got um, Jamie Collette in it, hasn't it? Uh, who played? Uh, who is in the sixth sense? Anybody? Oh, Tony Collette, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. I mean, it's horrible. So if you like a good horrible film, ooh, you'll love it. Might be another one to put on the list. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you you know, you get Rufus stabs to death, you get the baby death. But then, like, the bit I didn't notice before, like, when the kid, the, the whatever his name is, is like, we need to bury that, we need to bury that, like, he needs to rest. Trent. Trent, yeah, says, oh, like, the baby, need, he needs to rest. And he takes the baby, like, wrapped in this little bundle, <laughs> off her. And you just hear this clinking of bones. And the, 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 what I didn't notice the first time I watched it, it's like all the ashes fall out of the bottom of the blanket as he's, like, moving it. And it's like, oh, that's... I know, that's sorry, I'm really laughing, dark. It's, it's so, yeah, just like... But it's, it's so, like, I didn't see the ashes bit at the beginning. I just thought, he like, the baby had turned to bones because of the progression of time. Mm. And remains don't stay as they were. And it's like, whoa, like, just the that's really like, dark, M. Night. Like, what? Cartoon what? Like, bone like, sound. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, like, like. Bagofbones.mp3. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, freesounds.com. <laughs> and then you get, then you get, like, the ashes at the bottom. And it's like, what the heck? Like, yeah. it, I will say this because it might come across like we're bit, we've got a very strange manner discussing this film, but it is a bit goofy. Like, it's, yeah. it's, 
it's well, for Christ's sake, it's M Night Shyamalan people. What you know, you know what you're going to get by now. But I like that because at least he's doing something original. At least he's, I mean, After Earth aside, which is an abomination. He's at least, you know, he at least tries to do something a little bit different. So you get yeah. uh, uh, Ken Lung, who's, uh, who was in, and I was trying, where's how I know his face from? He was in Lost. And he was also, do you know what else he was in? He was in Saw, the first Saw as the detective, oh, detective yeah. uh, Singh, the one who gets do blasted by the shotguns. Him. Yeah, he's been yeah. in all sorts. Absolutely. A few of the Law and Orders, he's, he's been in absolutely all sorts. He's one of but, those yeah. faces where I know I've seen him on like TV and I just yeah. can't like, place him you know yeah um oh i mean i've got to say as well how high did she climb whatever pretty, her name was she did pretty bloody well considering she was she falls about 200 feet <laughs> like the yeah. cgi is not great on that bit but i gather because it was filmed in the midst of covid that yeah. i think there was certain things they could do and certain things they couldn't do so it was a weird thing though because i thought they were gonna like do more with the fact that like I said they're growing at such a rate that like every hour their their bodies like age by like five years or something they said. So it's like imagine an hour ago you're like twelve and then you're seventeen. You're living in a completely different body and like the amount of control she had over being able to like climb up those rocks was like suspiciously, suspiciously good. Cause you would have thought you'd just be falling all over the place, right? You're just because you don't have con- you've not used this body you don't know yeah. how to control a adolescent body you were literally five minutes ago but she is apparently just incredibly good at climbing like she really went up there she just yeah, yeah and then and obviously she passes out because of that because of this you know it's almost like some you know coming out of very deep water that intense cranial pressure type thing because mm-hmm. they, whenever they try and they get to this beach which is surrounded by rocks through this little crevasse but you can you can't pass back through any other direction, and you know without passing out and you stumble out like holding your head. Which I see, I, I like strange things like this. I like films like this. You know where you're kind of trying to figure out what's going on, and so they can't go back through that way. So they try. Want you know the the Ken Lung he tries to swim out and round to the next cove. He passes out and drowns just like mid sized sedans, uh, hot date, and then you've got. Uh, is it Kara? Is that her name? She tries to climb. Kira, yes, Kira. yeah. She tries to climb up and away, and she she obviously passes out as well, and she gets too high and she drops and gets killed. Somewhere. And um, it's like Kara, yeah, Kara, yeah. So it's it's like an it's an interesting concept. You get uh, the psychologist who I can't remember. I haven't wrote the actress name down, but she's brilliant. She's been in all sorts as well, and she. She she hasn't had a seizure for hours and years, technically, in her life. But they reckon, because of the thing at the end where they say they found a cure for some kind of epilepsy, they think what happened is they slipped her something in a drink after she had that seizure, mm-hmm. which is they, like um, this yeah. magic cure. Because they very it. pointedly are like, we'll get, you, we'll get you another drink. You need to have another drink. Yeah, yeah. Have her. And then, but then what happens is when it finally wears out, even though it would give you literally decades of seizure free she all of a sudden like the seizures start again and because time's so condensed she she fits and our seizures over and over and over again until the point and yeah it's a bit hollywoodized with the form of the mouth and stuff but she seizes until essentially she's exhausted her body and she 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 dies as well so but like you said it's very like it's very quick isn't it there's like all sorts happening so I know we said I've said this a few times on on the podcast, but you either go with this film or you you either accept what it's giving you and go with it or you don't. You either go with it and enjoy it or you go, no, this is just stupid. And it I don't know which way you're gonna go, but give it a go. It's good fun. Yeah, I think a lot of people hated it. Like from like reading reviews of it, like you whenever you read reviews, it's all gonna be people who love it or people who absolutely hated it. But I think I said people just had trouble just accepting the kind of weird world that this is set in and that like these characters for whatever reason like they just volunteer a lot of information and like the film tries to set up reasons for it like Trent the little kid is just he's a bit he's a bit strange the way he interacts with other people he he like goes out he's just like 
ask people like it's like what is your name and what is your occupation which is weird it's a weird thing to do but like well that's why yeah Sorry. You get all this information, and like a lot of the other characters do that as well. They're like intelligent, so they're like, okay, let's try and get as much information. I'm going to tell you what I know. You know, they talk through a lot of their stuff, but it makes sense because of the kind of characters that they were set up to be. But I think if you, like I said, if you just don't go into it with a bit of patience or willing to give it a little bit of slack, it can feel like you know why are these all these characters speaking like this and you know why is it all just happening over and over again like it can feel a bit like a slog and I think if you just I don't know if you can't just accept the characters what they are I imagine it could just be quite annoying yeah rough ride yeah well it's like um it's like the psychologist says that at one point doesn't she she's like oh look we need to we we need to have a bond it's an awful situation but we don't have time so we need to find what's going on. Because she calls them out again, doesn't she? And yeah. it's like, look, but it does feel a way that you'd be but like, look, we don't have time to like pussyfoot around. We need to, we literally need to get started here. Like, what's going yeah. on? What have what have you got? What have you got? And uh, but that that part about Trent, that was why I went back to the the thought that w- was he meant to be artistic or ha- you know, because it, it felt like that would be a natural fit for, for how he acts and how he interacts with people, and then that would that would also make sense as to when his, maybe that's why even though his body and his brain's maturing, he doesn't mature the same as the others. Mm-hmm. So, or at least if so, it, I, that was what kind of I was, th- I was, I might be completely, completely wrong with it, but oh. it was something that I, that I wondered to be. But. No, I think like, I think there's a point there. Cause like he, his, he's very intelligent, very like analytical and very like fact fo- focused from the get go. And then like, as time goes on he like physically gets older but like emotionally his thoughts still seem quite like childlike but then again he's able to be more analytical and he kind of starts to put things together and he's kind of the one who really puts all the puzzle pieces together to allow them to get off at the end you know he finds the diary of a priest previous person and like her him and his sister like figure it all out so yeah maybe there's a point about different rates of like different kinds of maturation you know, like how emotional maturity versus like a more intellectual thing yeah there's there's lots no no there's lots there to pick out though isn't there which is why i think what when i've i'd heard back from people there was just like daft and stuff like that i was thinking really like there's a lot of here for you to kind of look into which is something that i like with them like Shyamalan films even the worst ones mm. like even the happening there's still something behind it where he's trying to make a point he doesn't always stick the landing but he's, he's always aiming to and not in an arrogant way either i'd argue it feels like he's always trying to do something a little bit different and in this day and age i can't i can't like i can't do anything but kind of applaud that really in trying to do something a little bit different i mean it's like it feels very akin to the village if you've seen that out of all these films feels very akin to the village like even at the beginning where there was a sign saying like nature reserve i was thinking is this going to connect with the village in some strange kind of way (laughs) imagine (laughs) well yeah (laughs) i especially with the whole bit about oh i thought i saw something shiny up there the film and us and they give all the kids like what they get the dad's like whoa that's lots of food and he's like well kids eat a lot and it, when you first watch it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's nice of him. And then when you watch it back, you're like, ah, okay. That's so the kids can survive. So maybe the kid, you know, maybe the kids do have some kind of, well, some kind of conditions because they need to keep them alive or presumably. So it's, it's yeah, yeah they are one. studying them. Like, you know, they, I think they made, at the end, they were talking about how previous experiments they'd done, they, they didn't mix people with medical conditions with people without medical conditions, but, like for whatever reason there was like a a mix of like families and yeah kids there which if they did have medical conditions they didn't really say anything about about it so yeah I mean yeah it poses an awful question at the end though of like when they say oh we found a cure for epilepsy or whatever it was it's like it's the whole do the ends justify the means like, oh, we found something that will alleviate the suffering of millions, but we've killed hundreds of people on a beach. 
for mm. that and traumatize them and they've had a horrible like, like they've seen every they love die around them but but we've got this amazing thing it's like and it, it doesn't bear thinking about but i do think that he he was trying to make a point of like to the ends just like to the ends just by the means like what yeah. are you willing to what are you willing to accept for that kind of thing but i was um, quite surprised that you know there was a resolution to it where it was like this was not just some freak of nature thing this wasn't just like someone doing it for their own entertainment there was i said they made a point like this is a research thing this is in order to try and develop and test medicines long term and quickly and this is like the only way we found to do it and like i said the acknowledgement that this is a sacrifice and it's pretty horrible i don't i like that there was an effort to make it a bit nuanced and that it wasn't just someone it wasn't just like the owner of the resort just picking families yeah. that he didn't like and was just like hee 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 i'm just gonna yeah yeah if it felt a little bit like oh what's the film that does something similar to this oh it's gone out my head it's gone out my head anyway can't have been that good can it oh, can you a film remember that... any details it's a film that does something similar but it's gone it is absolutely gone <laughs> uh anyway it'll come to me later on but, oh no so yeah the cabin in the woods feels very much like the cabin in the yeah. woods a little bit yeah yeah i agree like you get at the end this <laughs> weird sort of bureaucratic like foundation that are doing it and then when they get did like a little 10 minute silence for all the all the people that are dead died and like sort of just uh bowed their head for a few minutes and then just carried on with it it did yeah it did feel like the scenes in cabin in the woods where people just went, oh you know this sort of token appreciation for the lives that were lost but at the end of the day it's like it's just every day for them yeah it's a really good um it's a really good comparison actually yeah it's just, i just i knew when you were talking i was like oh it's like that and then my brain forgot it but yeah i mean and you get to at the end basically there's only the two of them left the brother and sister everyone else is dead and they he just uh he decipher trent deciphers a code from idlib his his friend and it's because they made these codes together that says like my dad doesn't like the coral or something like that, and they, they they swim through this like tunnel of coral, and that somehow gets you out to the other side of it. Because I like that bit where the dad earlier on was like uh, the, the Trent's dad and Mad Madison's is it Madison? Maddox Maddox was like, there's got to be a way out. It's a mathematical certainty there has to be a way out, and I was like, it's nice to hear somebody say it because of course there has to be a way out. There yeah. has to be a way out. But they can't figure it out, and then he figures it out, and they get out the other side and get back. He bumps it at the cop because obviously it's only been a few hours for everybody else, um, or like half a day or whatever. And he is like, tells the cop, the cop like issues subpoenas, arrests all the staff and stuff like that, and they fly kind of over the beach in a helicopter, and you see the research part getting closed down. It's quite an interesting ending and it, I, I liked it and you know the, the actors are good you've got Embeth Davitz uh, who you'll all recognize she played Miss Honey and Matilda she oh, was in oh that's what yeah. she oh yeah. thank you it's all right she was in <laughs> Bicentennial yeah yeah <laughs> she was in Bicentennial Man she's also in Schindler's List she's she's been in all sorts she's a great actress uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name but he also does a good job uh, and, the, and to be fair, it's hard with the ones that play Trent because they all look very, very similar, which annoys the point, but like, mm. like shockingly so. They um, do quite well, actually, considering yeah. like how we don't get an awful lot of screen time with the kids and the fact that they there's like three different castings from them. It could have been really easy for one of them to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, but like, I feel like they did really quite well in that like you could really tell they were the same they were the same kids um with quite little dialogue like yeah could have really goofed that but it was quite well done yeah no it was i, I enjoyed it would you have you got any more notes oh, bless you dad sneezing there would you uh would you like to uh have you got any, oh no would you, jesus have you got i was going to the end in there have you got any more have you got any more notes before i get into yeah I'll see what i've noticed so we've talked about most of the things that um 
I wrote down. I said, as the really like cool little horror bits that I really like. It's like I like the initial reveal with the um the body I'm shocked. I'm of shocked. the lady. You know, when she just like floats up behind like that. Oh yeah, That's yeah. The little creepy thing that they did. Um there's quite a lot of weird mistakes though. Like one of the ones that I caught was like when um there is the reveal of um, the body. I think it is. Uh, yeah, it's the body of the girl who floated up initially, and they they go back and they realise that she's like um, decomposed away to just bones, and there's like crystal in the back, and she like she like shouts something, and they never ADR her voice back in. <laughs> it just like completely derailed the scene for me. What was that? Say that again. What? What? She shouts and then what? They. She like so they. They reveal like the body. So um, the the lady's body who was there with mid size. They is she put? They, is she putting her earrings back in or something? They. She literally just looks over at a body and like clearly just shouts like what? And it, it's completely silent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's weird. What? It's so amazing. like the. So they cut the audio out of it, like she didn't, yeah. you think? and they never put her oh. back in, yeah, for whatever reason, they had to go back over it. But no, there's a lot of really gross things that I really liked, so like, you know, I can see why, again, you... Well, yeah, I asked you, what's, it. yeah, I asked, I, uh, anybody listening, it was another one of those, Sarah, have you seen this? No, oh, you should see this, because I saw this a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, So many yeah. weird, gross bits. I know, like, I was like, yeah, this is one for me and Sarah, this is going to be good fun. Like Charles's death is like horrible. They oh God, up... yeah, I'd forgotten. Yeah, yeah, the, the sepsis yeah. or whatever he gets. Or no, no, it's what do you get when you get uh, whatever it is? Yeah, yeah, I think so, it is yeah, sepsis. Yeah, 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 like they cut him with a rusty knife, and it you see. Oh, what's that you get? No, what's that you get? Tetanus is it tetanus as well. Yeah, so think, you see yeah. his blood like turn black in his veins, and it's it's like comparatively quick, but you know this is a minute of someone's whole body just putrefying in front of him but like it was kind of a relief because he's he was clearly like degrading to the point where he like I said he was just pure panic all the time he was just convinced everyone was trying to attack him and like lunging out at people so it was like you know kind of a mercy <laughs> it could have been it could have been much worse but that was a horrible death but it's like once they've rounded out like his death is horrendous crystal's death is so yeah she's said so she's just flailing around and breaking her bones over and over again until she's well, like then they're set in the wrong place and oh it's yeah it's... yeah because they set instantly but she doesn't die obviously so she just does this like dozens of times and it's like horrendous and then once they're out of the way we cut back to the family and they've they've kind of come to the realization of just <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, you've just seen somebody flail themselves to death. Yeah. Well, yeah. can you just ignore that for a minute while we have this really heartwarming scene around a fire? Yeah. Like they're like, right, we're gonna I think at that point they're like, we're not gonna get out of here. You know, this is Oh, because he reveals, doesn't he? he? Reveals that he knows that she's like was cheating, doesn't he? Yeah. So they're just like, let's make the best of it we can and like said so have a nice little conversation around the fire and then like <laughs> the parents both die just rapid fire just <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah I, I don't know whether this is uh, a good podcast or whether it's just making people question our sanity but uh, it was oh, my dude M. Night Shyamalan films do make you question your sanity I think oh, but yeah. I mean would would you like to know the trivia of the film that Jack Nicholson and Please. Marlon Brando did together. So it was the Missouri Breaks, 1976, which bears no relation. Like the plot doesn't bear any relation to this film whatsoever. Like it's not a clue or anything. <laughs> the reason why uh, the M Night Shyamalan puts it in is actually quite like sad, but it's it's like kind of nice but sad. You'll know what I mean in a minute. So basically, it was from his dad, Doctor Neliatu C Shyamalan, who also has dementia. And quote, he said. M. Night said, I've never seen The Missouri Breaks. It's from my dad, who actually has some dementia. And he would not stop talking about Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando, this movie that they were in. And I was like, Dad, I've never oh. seen it. And he and he goes, Jack Nicholson, Marlon Brando. And he kept going on and on about it. 
And I was like, Dad, I'm putting this in a movie if you keep talking about this. And he did. So he I did. <laughs> so, so that was like where he put that in from. So that I thought that was quite an interesting thing because it it makes sense like in, in the context of the film and in the context of like Charles's condition that he's like that's what happens with people like with those kind of men, you know, those conditions that affect your mental faculties and that you start to lose comprehension, but you can still retain certain things and you know, and it, it yeah, it's I, I thought that was quite a nice uh, nice bit of trivia really. I mean sad but but like interesting that that's in there. So that's what I like about him, Night Shyamalan. Like he, he he draws from different things. I, oh, I'd love to. I tell you what, if there's anyone I'd want to interview for this podcast, it'd be him. Can you imagine? That'd oh, be fascinating. Be, I would love to know the thought process because, like, this is such a strange film. But like I said, I really, I expected it to not come together in the way that it did. Like I said, there were. It surprised me in a lot of ways. Like I said, the characters turned out to be much more interesting than you initially think, and it really did come together really well. Um, but so many things about this film are so are so strange, and I really would love to just know the like intention behind them. You know, I want to know what what he was going for. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I wonder if he'd tell you though. But I would like to ask him. I would like to kind of dig into how they made it. Because how they made it's fascinating because it was during all the COVID stuff. So M. Night basically mm-hmm. pays for all of all of the cast and crew to stay in a hotel for 10 weeks. And not one single member of the cast or, or, or the crew falls with COVID because it was back when you had to isolate and it was a nightmare. So I, that was a fascinating on its own. And they all said that filming in that environment where you were so isolated and it felt like the world had stood still, which I understand. Yeah, it was such an interesting thing to be making a film about time and relationships when they were when basically the whole world had kind of essentially stopped and uh, nothing that's... was happening. So I didn't I realize thought... that. Yeah, that does make sense that it like is a particularly a a product of COVID. Like, wow. Yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't think that was the intention because when they started making it, no one knew, but that like all oh, that was going to happen. Well, none of us did, did we? But I think it was just an interesting thing, and I think. Anyone who's not seen the film, give it a chance. It's like one of those films where I kind of want to say to people, look, forget what you've heard and just take an hour. Of, I think it's like an hour of 43, hour and 40 yeah. minutes, something like that. Just take a couple of hours and, and, and watch it and, and just try to take it for what it is. But certainly, I mean, it's a gift of a film to talk about for a podcast because there's so much there for you to talk about, isn't there? I think it's like I probably will rewatch it as well because I think – I was saying there's so many little tidbits and if you want to watch it and just focus in on any one thing you could kind of get something different from it and like I would I'm interested to know what it's like watching it I said re-watching it when you know how it's going to play out you're not sort of waiting to see what sort of direction the action's going to take and then just focusing in on like the relationship side of it or like oh, just holds on up the really well and stuff holds up really well it. yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt it holds up really well because this is the second time i've watched it and because you know what's going to happen you can then start to kind of like relax and actually mm-hmm. pick up on what they're saying especially at the hotel in the beginning there's lots of clues like that yeah, first scene like that. sorry yeah sorry on, on the bus the scene with that where the mum's talking about you know like don't waste this look outside it's beautiful and time and they're all talking about and she there's that I like the scene and it makes a lot more sense the second time around when you watch it where they're arguing at the beginning and when you first watch it you're thinking about the kids and the effect on the kids but then the second time you watch it yeah you're thinking about that as well but you're also watching it and listening to what they're saying he's she says to him you you, you she says you're too busy thinking about the future and she, he says to her you're too busy living in the you're too busy thinking about the past like you you spend all your time in that museum and and hit whereas he's very much he predicts things that are going to happen with art, with his job and statistics and accidents. So like she's forever looking back and he's forever looking forward. So to have two people like that together, like they're pulling in different yeah. directions, which is something that just doesn't strike you the first time around. Cause it's, oh, it's just a couple arguing and who's cheating on who or whatever, but it's just like a really simple way of doing it. But then when you watch it again, it's like, Oh, okay. Right. So yeah, these are two like diametrically opposed people. Like one, one's life is trying to predict things 
in front of it's going to happen and odds and all that kind of where somebody else is like looking back always and she has that scene with her daughter where she says you know i've spent all my time looking at nameless people and nameless bones and i was worried i was going to become one of them and it does pose some very interesting questions. It doesn't always give you the answers. In fact, it gives you very little, very few answers about the characters. It gives you an answer about the situation, but it pauses a lot for you, I think. It does give you a lot of, like I said, there's not a lot of concrete answers, but like I said, even if you just focus in on their relationship, um, like, yeah, going from the conversations at the beginning where, like, every every conversation feels like an argument that they're trying to win against each other and then you know, you get to the very end where they've realised that there isn't really any getting out of it and they realise, like, all of the problems that they felt that they had ultimately don't really matter and they're just kind of sat together um, until they die. It's like, that's, it's quite it's quite a lot to work with. There's, like, one tiny aspect of a film. There's a lot you can look at there and a lot you can... Um, yeah, what you can think but, about. Yeah, but it's like that Ferris Bueller thing, quote, isn't it? You know, life moves awfully fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. That's kind of what it felt like. And he was trying to say, and then again, you see, like, when you watch it back the second time, you see, like, really little bits that pass you by the first time, like, where they first get to the beach and the kids start, like, Trent starts playing with these, like, little action figure doll things. And he's saying... Oh, is he playing with the little girl? I can't remember. But either way, like they're playing with dolls or whatever, and he's mm-hmm. he's enacting what he's heard his parents say. Like, I can't talk to you right now. And I don't you you're not listening. And you can see like the mum look at him like, oh my god, like yeah. and it dawns on her that like the kids are hearing this and it's affecting them. And so all these it's little like him and the other him and the girl from the other family. So it's like not only do you realise that she realizes, oh shit, I'm not, you know, my kids are this is rubbing off on them, but also you get the indication that's the same for the other little girl in the other family. It's just like it's pretty, pretty clever. That's a pretty clever thing to do. Yeah, pretty depressing, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's well, unrelentingly depressing. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I well, was quite impressed. Uplifting in the end. It's got a kind of a happy ending, although it's like, well, how would you feel if you? six-year-old nephew called up and told you he was, and it was a fifty-year-old man. But that was that was. I, I yeah. did like I did like that, but but yeah. Um, so yeah, on summary for me, yeah, go, go give it a watch. I think it's been. I wouldn't say unfairly maligned because I can see where people are coming from. I think it's one of those films that, very much like everything, everywhere all at once, you'll either get it and love it, or you will like we with that one. You'll go, I don't know what you're on about with this one. Do you mm-hmm. feel the same or different? No, I agree. I think um, there are criticisms you can make of it, like it is an M. Night Shyamalan film, like, unavoidably, like, even if you didn't know, you'd watch it, like, oh, it's an M. Night Shyamalan film, but, like, it tries some really interesting things, and most of it, I feel, pays off really well. There's still a fair few bits that are a bit clunky or just a bit weird, but don't quite gel with everything else, but, like, it's asking loads of questions. It's trying to touch on so many things. And in general, there's been a real effort to make everything happen on the screen, like worthwhile. And it's all working towards like something. And like I said, it's not all tied up with a neat bow at the end, but like there's a lot of stuff to work with. And like it's rewatchable. And like I know I've said this a lot, but finding films that are actually rewatchable, recent releases is hard <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, yeah well no when we're not neither oh you'll know this anybody if you listen to mine and sarah's pod, uh, uh episodes together and if you and if this, if this is your first one go back and check out some of the others because we've done some buttes but what i would say is like we always do we're not like wax being like wax local about this we're not like rose tinted glasses you know it's amazing we are being fair with it in that there are some parts of it like the pregnancy part of it that I think they did it for the impact, maybe. Mm-hmm. But it just, or they did it for another reason, but did they cut bits out or change the way it was? And it just doesn't land. I don't think it works at all. And I think if you took it out, it wouldn't affect the film at all. And it probably might help to give it a bit of breathing space. But then yeah. without that, you won't get that scene with like the the bones clinking and the, the, the catalyst why she basically climbed up the rocks. So, or and him then talking he, to his dad, you know? Yeah. Okay coming to terms with it yeah you kind of I feel like it's worth that really 
ropey, weird scene for some of the stuff that comes afterwards. But it is weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But I mean, I don't. Maybe it's the execution. Then I don't know. Maybe it's just I don't know. Something doesn't quite fit. It just doesn't quite. I don't know. It doesn't work as it should. Uh, maybe it's just the premise is uncomfortable. I don't know. But yeah. Anywho, uh, but that, I mean, apart from that, pretty solid. I think I'm. I'm surprised because I've seen a lot of people absolutely slander it, yeah. and I'm like, really? I'm like, have you seen some of them? Nights like this is not. This is not there. This is not that bad. Like it's actually quite decent if you give it like a fair. A fair work. I've found that with, a, I've done a couple of, of M. Night Shyamalan's films to defend it. And like I've, I've done The Village and I've done L The Lady in the Water and I've generally enjoyed a lot of his films watching them, like being older because you know you're going to get something different. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, like you said, a film that I can rewatch and that I find different, even if it doesn't all work for me, I'm, I'm there for. You know, even though I wouldn't, I wouldn't put this up with kind of signs or Unbreakable or anything like that, but it is definitely the you know definitely mid to upper level of his films i don't think this is this isn't like the happening or afterlife territory for anybody maybe it is who knows it does make you wonder what some of the people were expecting because like i've seen the trailer for this and um i wouldn't say the trailer's like particularly misleading or anything i feel like if you've seen the trailer it's a pretty good indication of the kind of film you're gonna see it doesn't give you everything but like I wouldn't watch the trailer and then go watch that and be like, that wasn't what I expected, you know? So what, <laughs> I don't how know. are people getting into the cinema and watching this and not being aware that it's an M. Night Shyamalan movie and also it's going to be strange? Like, well, Of course it is. I will say this, though, one of the best posters I've seen in years. Have you seen the poster? Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, great, isn't it? With like a woman sat on a beach towel, you see her legs. And one leg's like really young and youthful, the other one's like old, and then it's like a skeleton foot at the bottom. And it's, well, it's just a really just, good poster. It's not just loads of like, you know, torsos floating heads. in the middle. So, yeah, yeah, it's not just floating heads. Yeah, God, posters are terrible nowadays. Anywho, before we start to uh, depress ourselves even further, um, <laughs> would you thank you very much for joining me, Sarah? It's been, it's been a blast as ever. And we've, I'd love to know, I don't mean this to sound horrible, but I'd love to know anyone listens to this, what do these actually sound like? Do they sound quite, like quite insightful or are we just going a bit nuts? I'd love to know. I'd love to know. Is it an absolute mess? Yeah. I, would definitely... I, don't, think, I don't think so. I think the pretty, the, our reviews are pretty coherent. I just think that we like, we really deep dive into, into the ideas, but, but what's the point of watching a film like this if you're not going to deep dive into it? Because yeah. you could discuss this and be like, oh, they're dying. And they're, you could go through it like that. But also there's like a lot of ideas in there some would say too many but like there's lots <laughs> in there isn't there so there are maybe too many ideas yeah yeah i would yeah. love to know like if anyone else watches it and then yeah listens to this and be like do you are you you're on the same page as us or do people absolutely hate it because i couldn't imagine hating it it's just so weird but like it just apps just stuff happens all the time like even if yeah. you think the performances even if you don't like the performances or like the concept Surely you can just get behind, you know, just people dying maybe, in weird, ridiculous ways. But maybe it's our, but maybe it's our kind of weird, though. Like, you know, maybe. like life or stuff. Maybe it's our kind of weird. Maybe the people who loved everything everywhere all at once will watch this and be like, "Really? You didn't like that? But <laughs> well, you're giving this a pass? What was the matter? Like, what's the matter with you two? Oh so, my god, yeah. People are gonna come for us and just be like, "Okay." <laughs> at least I know they're listening. Like that would be nice. <laughs> Engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me I'm talking rubbish, but at least let me know you're listening. Um, yeah. So on, on that note of listening, uh Sarah, would you like to tell everybody um well where you're from? Uh <laughs> yeah. no, um would you like to tell everybody basically like where they can find your podcast and, and your episodes and everything? Exactly. So yes, I am um Sarah from Weird Horizon, so you can find me as Weird Horizon um everywhere basically. And I do podcast on spooky and strange things, really. Um, and then come on here quite a lot and talk with Sean about weird films. So if you like more weird things, I do like long um, series on strange, paranormal, spooky topics. So if you kind of like the stuff that 
I seem to pick up on and go, mm, yes, strange. Um, you come on over, I might have some series for you and things like that. But I do like coming on here and just talking about films. It is very nice. Yeah, I, I forget often that you don't do film. Like, no, I don't forget you don't do films, but I forget quite a few of my guests who come on to talk about films don't actually do films. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, they don't do films, do they? <laughs> I kind of wish I did. Like, I, I really do love films. I do love talking about films, but I don't know why I kind of chose the topics and the format that I did, but I'm committed now. I've been doing it for like 18 months or something, so I can't stop. I feel well I can but you know I'm not going to <laughs> I love that I can't stop it's it's often it's a good way to be there's up the off the the problem in podcast land is often the other way on that people just stop because it's yeah. a lot of work and or change the focus and stuff and like yeah see I'm I'm I, I'm lucky in a way that I can kind of as long as I'm reviewing something I can get away with it I, I <laughs> can do true. food or a beer or which I have done <laughs> Or I can do make... pot noodle reviews or something. Yeah, well, I've done different types of beer. I did bacon and maple syrup pancakes from Iceland. How was that? Places. Iceland, microwaves, horrendous, but... Frozen yeah, I... pancakes? I didn't know you could yeah, freeze like... pancakes. Well... You can't? Well, <laughs> you can. You, you, you can, whether you should is another uh, argument <laughs> entirely. But, yeah, I'm lucky that I can just kind of review anything, really, but... um. But yeah, uh, you're listening to uh, Review it Yourself, the podcast with the sigh. No politics, no pandering, absolutely no point. You can find us on Twitter, it's at Yourself Review. We're also on Instagram, it's Review it Yourself Podcast 2021. And we also have a Patreon for now. I'm thinking of scrapping it, but stay tuned. And uh, <laughs> just being honest, uh, yeah, so if you've enjoyed this, go back and listen to some of our other episodes me and Sarah have done. I don't, I, I don't know how many we've done now, but it must be getting up towards... It must be seven or eight by now, if not more. Gotta we've be. done quite a yeah. few. And we also did, because I've, I've had this crop up on a few episodes with different people where we've spoken about how Brendan Fraser needs to do a fourth Mummy film. Well, me and Sarah actually did a whole episode on that. So go back and mm-hmm. find that one. Because that one's, that one's a cracker. You've um, sketched but, it out. You just, you know, pick it up and make it. It's ready. It's on the table yeah, for them. So. It's there. It's there. But get, for God's sake, get the cast back. Whatever you do. <laughs> Please get the cast back. Please. Uh, m- maybe leave the rock. Don't bring him back. But... <laughs> <laughs> what have you got uh, against Dwayne the Rock Johnson? Um, Nothing. But I just think his choice of films is just bizarre. Like, and he just, I don't know. Like, you know... I don't see what he brings. Like, you know, you get he some... Rock. He's just the rock. That's all he is. No. Well, yeah, I mean, who am I to talk? He's clearly very, very successful, but I just, I don't quite... Although I do love the Scorpion King, so... Yeah, same. I'll let him off. I do, I do like that one. I don't like the 500 sequels they did to it, though. Oh, I never watched we... any of the director DVD ones. No, oh, never did. Maybe we should you know, uh, see. I was saying maybe we should do those, but could, it, we'd just be so depressed. Like that—that that would actually depress me and you. Not a film about death, like the Lion King. Mm. Uh, the Lion King, just Jesus, the Scorpion King four, like the return to wherever. Like, it'd be like, oh God, no. Yeah, I don't think I could enjoy like watching everything I liked about something be completely stripped away, and then it's just yeah. Yeah, that's like a good not. point. Anyway, on that note, thank you to everybody for listening. <laughs> and uh, yeah, stick around for, for more reviews coming your way. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Bye. Sarah. <laughs> I'm reading The Scorpion King now. Oh, do you know what? I've actually got a book. Uh, where is it? It, it? Shit, that's that gone. Uh, the Mummy Chronicles, Revenge of the Scorpion King. And why hasn't this stopped recording? Um... God, the the cast Stop recording. Like, no one that I've ever no one I've ever seen before oh no Rutger Hauer's in it for some reason mm. who are these people oh god the Scorpion King ones yeah there's like, why won't they stop recording seriously this is this is bizarre pressing stopping and it won't stop why won't it stop uh, stop oh, no. No. it's going to be too raw too real for the podcasting world <laughs> Well, I haven't shit myself yet, so <laughs> it genuinely will not start. Well, uh, you're listening to oh, review yourself after hours. That sounds right. <laughs>
That sounds, doesn't sound right, does it? Uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound right, no. Why does it stop? So we watch some more interesting films. Mm. <laughs> Sarah calls them esoteric. You make up your mind. Uh, yeah, I don't know what is going on. This. I might have to stop the call. Um, I I don't know what's going. I can't stop the recording. Like at all. Hang on, You're I'll stuck stop. in this podcasting purgatory. Oh God. Uh, I've got a thing that says stop recording. Should I try it? I might. Yeah, yeah, you try. Yeah, you try. It. Yeah, does it? I pressed it. It doing nothing. It's doing absolutely nothing. I mean, the quality seems better though. So yeah. Wow, right. it's not great, is it? Why won't it stop? Hang on, I'll I'll I'll, I'll send you another link because this will not. I don't know what's the matter with it, but it won't stop. Hang on, so fair enough. It's just it's just when I come to edit it because I'll have to. Oh, anyway, why why won't it? Why, hang on, I'll talk to you in a sec. Why won't it See stop? Why won't it stop? <laughs> Get it in. Get it on and enjoy the flog. Welcome to Film Vloggers. Oh, harder, Daddy. The only film review podcast, thankfully, that poses the question Does watching this film feel like flogging a dead horse? There he is, beating that dead horse! Introducing your hosts. First up, her Irish potty mouth turns the air a whole new shade of blue. It's Fiona. Say hello, Fiona. And why the f*** is Dan Mackers doing our intro? I want me gold! That's great. It's great. She's adorable. And your second host needs no introduction. The man. The myth. The legend. Like, I said I'd do this. I said I'd do this for you. I'm not reading this. It's the guy who waffles too much. It's Ben. Cooey! I'm making waffles. So what are you waiting for? Grab your whip. Mount your dead horse, and let's get on with the flog, shall we? 